Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. You might ask yourself what's with all the bubbles on the screen? Well, today we'll talk about bubble sort and that's why you see all the bubbles on the screen. Bubble sort is also sometimes to refer as a thinking sort and it is a very basic and simple so sorting algorithm that is very easy to implement and therefore it is very useful for those of you who might be new to computer science and to programming in general to check it out how the bubble sort works. Now this is a set of very simple sorting algorithm that repeatedly steps through the list of the elements that need to be sorted, compares each pair of elements and then swaps them if they are, they are in the wrong order. The pass through the list is repeated until no swaps are needed anymore, which clearly indicates that the list is now sorted. This algorithm, which is also a comparison sort, is named bubble sort for the way smaller or larger elements bubble up to the top of the list. So let's take a deeper look into how this algorithm is supposed to work and then we'll jump to Visual Studio and we'll try to write the code for this algorithm. So let's suppose that we have a list of 5 numbers, 10, 15, 7, 20 and 5. And of course we need to sort this list according to the bubble sort. Now as we said in bubble sort we have to pass through this list, compare each pair of items and then swap them if they are in the wrong order. So we would have to perform several different iterations here. Let's start with the first iteration. So we would first have to compare the first number which is 10 to 15. So is 10 greater than 15? No, it is not. So we will leave it in the same order. Then we go to 15 and we have to compare it to 7. Is 15 greater than 7? Of course it is and this means that we will have to swap them. Now we have to compare the third one which now the third element is 15. So is 15 greater than 20? No. So we leave it like it is. And for the last time in this iteration we compare 20 to 5. 20 is of course greater so we swap them. So after this fir first iteration what we notice is that we have at the last element the biggest number and even if the biggest number is initially at first so the first element in the list after the first iteration we can be sure that it will be the last one so this is the list with which we start the second iteration which is 10 7 15 5 and 20 and we do exactly the same process once again is 10 greater than 7 of course it is so we have to swap them so we have now 10 in second place and we compare 10 to 15. Is 10 greater than 15? No, it is not. So we leave it in this order. Then is 15 greater than 5? Yes, of course it is. So we will swap them. And then as last 15 is greater than 20? No, it is not. And we will leave this in the same order. So this is how we start the third iteration with 7, 10, 5, 15 and 20. And we can see that the last two elements in the list are already sorted. So we start once again. Is 7 greater than 10? No, it is not. So we leave it as it is. Then 10 greater than 5? Yes, 10 is greater than 5. So we swap them. And now to maintain the same process, the algorithm we compare 10 to 15, but we already know that these last items are sorted. And finally, we go to the fourth iteration. And here we have to compare is 7 greater than 5? Yes, it is. And so we have to swap them. And now, of course, we could go through all the list further, but we see already that our list is sorted. So that's exactly the same thing that we will try to implement in a simple console application in C Sharp. However, it's important to note here two things. First of all, we have a first iteration, a second iteration, a third iteration and a fourth iteration. And then within each iteration we also iterate through each pair of numbers to check which one is greater. This means that in our algorithm what we will need is basically two loops. So we will use an outer loop for what we call here first iteration, second iteration, third iteration and fourth iteration. And we'll use an inner loop 
in which we'll compare the numbers and swap them if needed. So let's go to C Sharp. First of all, let's set things up. So what we want to do is to have a list of integers of numbers that we want to sort. And in order to not necessarily have always the same list, let's create a random one. So we do this using the random class R and D equals new random. Now we have the new random object that we could, can use to generate random numbers. The next thing that we need would be an array of numbers. So an array of integers, let's call it numbers. And this would be equal to a new int array. And let's uh, have 10 elements in the list. Okay. And now what we have to do is basically to populate the list because, or the array to be technically more exact. Because what we have here is an empty array of 10 elements. So at each index of the array, we have zero basically because the, the default, or if you don't specify a value for the number for an integer, it will be zero. So let's use a for loop to do this. So for i equals int i equals zero. Of course, i should be less than numbers dot length and we need the iterator i plus plus and what we, we will do here is that uh, for each index in this array what we will do is numbers of index i would be equal to r and d dot next and let's give it a range from 0 to 100 which will give a range from 1 to 99 Okay, and now to be also more precise, we can write this to the console, console.writeline array to be sorted, and that's it. And now we use, or we will need another for each loop in this case, because we want to print everything to the console for each var number in numbers okay and what we'll do console.write and we'll write number but let's add also a space so that we have spacing between numbers and as a last step let's here also add the console write line to add a new empty line here so this is how we uh, set up uh, everything. Now the next step, of course, would be to implement this algorithm and let's do it using a method, bubble sort, and that's it. Now, of course, this method is not implemented. So what we can do right now is generate method and it generated this method for us. And this is basically where we will do our magic and sort the array. However, another thing that we need here is that uh, we need numbers here. We need the array of numbers, so this means that uh, this one will take in an int array. Let's call it also numbers. Okay, and now we are set up. We can start to define our algorithm. And let's start by thinking what we exactly need. When we discussed the algorithm that we want to write, this bubble sort, we said that we would need basically two loops. A loop that we called an outer loop, which was representative for the first iteration, second iteration, uh, third iteration, and fourth iteration. So the total number of iterations that we need to sort the list or the array of numbers. And then we had another loop in each iteration, which compared each pair of numbers and swapped them if they were in the wrong order. So let's start by implementing these loops, which will be four loops in our four loops in our case. So it would be the outer loop, int i equals zero, i is less than numbers dot length. However, here we have to use length minus one, and we'll also see exactly why, because we mentioned always that the element by the time we finish the first loop or the first loop in the first iteration, we know that at the last position we have the highest number. And also we have to be attentive because if we don't uh, set this to numbers.length-1, 
will also get an array out of bounds exception and we will look into this just a little bit later. And let's also eat the iterator here. And then, so the outer loop is now defined. Let's now create the inner loop. And this would be for uh, int j equals zero. j is also less than numbers dot length minus one. And let's add also the iterator to it. And here we have also the inner loop. And we said that in the inner loop, we need to always compare the pair of numbers, the current pair of numbers. And if these numbers are in the wrong order, then we have to swap them. So this means that we have to make a comparison and therefore we need an if statement. And the if statement would be that if numbers, and we will check the number at position j in the array is greater than the number at position j plus one in the array, so this means that the first number is greater than the second one, which is wrong. So only in this case, we have to perform few actions. Now, swapping two numbers, it's maybe easier to do mentally, but when we want to do this programmatically, what we would need here is also a temporary variable. So we will declare an int temp and this uh, int temp would be equal to uh, numbers and the number at the position j. And now we have to perform the swap. So the new number j would be in this case numbers and the number at the position j plus one. And the new numbers, the new number at position j plus one would be equal to temp because temp holds now the value that and the number at position j held before it. And that's basically it. That's how we swap numbers. And by the time all the iterations are completed, we should have a sorted array of numbers. And in this case, we can also try to output this list to the console. Let's first add some basic explanation on what's displayed, the sorted array of numbers. And then if, if we want to display each number in this array, we would need once again a for each loop and in for each var number in numbers. What we want to do is console.write and the number plus spacing so that we can read it a little bit more easy. Okay, the space not here, but here. And that should do it. Also, maybe let's add here a console right line at the end to start a new line and uh, that should do it. Now, the only thing that uh, is now also important is to make sure that we have also a console read line at the end, which we have, because otherwise the console window will close immediately after all the outputs are displayed. And now we can try to run the program and check if everything is okay. And if everything is okay, then we should have here first an array of numbers in random order, and then the sorted array of numbers, and we have 13, 15, 20, 22, 26, 57, twice, 67, so it's fully sorted. Now, since we used random, if we run the program once again right now, what we will see is that we will have a totally new array of numbers. And if we check a little bit around, we see that also this array of numbers seems to be sorted. So that's basically how bubble sort works. It's really not very complicated. As I said, it's uh, mostly used to uh, introduce sorting algorithms to students that are new to computer science or programming. and that's exactly also the aim of this video. However, there is a last thing I would like to mention here. If you watch the video on Fibonacci numbers, because we did it, we did a video on Fibonacci numbers, you would see that the algorithm to generate a Fibonacci sequence is, I would say, similar. The only difference there is mostly that you need only one loop because you need to generate the sequence only once. So you don't need the first iteration, second iteration, and so on. But this part here is exactly the same as that one that we used
for the generating Fibonacci numbers. I strongly encourage you to check out also the video on Fibonacci numbers if you didn't watch it so far. So that's it for now, that's everything to say around bubble sort or mostly because now I remember there are maybe some few things more to add here. First of all, bubble sort uh, is not a very good algorithm when it comes to real implementation because from the runtime perspective it is a very bad one since you have to loop twice to the array of numbers. So the runtime of the algorithm is very 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 long. And also due to the fact that it has to perform a lot of swaps, it's uh, the, the runtime itself or the performance of this algorithm is really worse than other sorting algorithms that also use two loops. So once again, I wouldn't recommend using bubble sort in your own programs, in your own, let's say, production ready programs, but it's useful to get started with programming and basic algorithmic thinking. Okay, I think that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and the content on developer ramp up, then uh, hit the subscribe button. If you think that you have friends or other people in your network that might be interested in this type of content, don't be shy and share it on your social networks. And also, if you want to add things, if you want to ask some questions, if you want to give any type of feedback, or if you simply want to propose some topics that you would uh, like to have discussed on developer ramp up, just hit me up with, with a comment and I would be more than happy to respond to it. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.